This love of Mozart began when I was 12 years old. My romantic and aristocratically beautiful godmother took me to see the magic flute at Glyndebourne. I was completely overwhelmed by the magic of this work and it has continued to overwhelm me with its beauty all through my life. Only recently have I tried to understand why I love Mozart beyond any other composer. Mozart belongs to a historical age that does not attract me in the least, an age of superficiality, powdered wigs and the age of the Enlightenment. It seems unlikely, therefore, that the most sacred composer of the West should emerge in that dilapidated era. Using the term sacred about Mozart may surprise you, but I truly believe that Mozart's magic flute connects to Krishna's flute, just as his music in general can be compared to that particular kind of sacredness that one finds in sublime Persian and Hindu miniature paintings. I'm not, of course, saying that Mozart himself was fully spiritually developed. God used this frail man to communicate to the world the eternal vision of childhood and the divine world of Leela, a Sanskrit term meaning divine play. I believe that Mozart's soul apprehended the theophanies, the divine manifestations that came into him from God. Unconsciously, no doubt, Mozart's soul became aware of the ecstatic vision bestowed upon him. It was a vision that he could never have explained or understood in words, but a vision nonetheless that his soul would continuously pour forth in music. Mozart was faultlessly crystalline and the most natural composer that ever lived. His melodies, his rhythms and his harmonies seem as natural to me as virgin nature or breathing. Mozart's music, you might say, pre-existed. It required that man to pluck it out from the spheres. Mozart sees the divine and hears it in everything. He hears God everywhere, and he sings his ecstasy in every single one of his operatic characters, from Zorastro to Papageno, to the Countess in Figaro and to Don Giovanni himself. He cannot help himself, for like the eternal child that he is, he never ceases to celebrate the ecstatic act of being. It is in almost everything that Mozart wrote. Many pundits love to dwell on the Requiem or the doubtless remarkable entrance of the Commendatore in Don Giovanni, probably because these people love the innovatory. But paradoxically, for me... It is not in these moments that I perceive the divine in Mozart, but in the far less obviously remarkable major modes in Così fan tutte or in Zerlina's unbearably beautiful Vedrai Carino in Don Giovanni. This invokes in me all the longing and all the beauty and all the truth that I know. Zerlina, by offering her beating heart to Mazzetto, becomes the heartbeat of God seen through the eyes of a child.
I so often play this music on the piano. And if you change one single note of it, or if you change a single note in the spacing of a chord, it immediately falls to pieces. The spacing of every simple and divine chord is so perfectly heard that once again it seems to belong to a celestial harmony. Listen to any contemporary of Mozart and you will not find this perfection, not even in the more masculine and cerebral Haydn. Mozart is for me what the Sufis call a manifestation of the essence of God. The fact that one can speak in such exalted terms about Mozart puts him in a unique category and outside the whole canon of Western music. In his essence, he has revealed paradise to me, the world in between heaven and earth. From time to time, God allows inhabitants of paradise to enter into every beautiful form. The beautiful form here is the music of Mozart. He alone among Western composers has most perfectly shown me that the true imagination is mystical experience, the creative power of the heart. His music is without decay, paradisial, and permeated with a divine and innocent beauty. Paradise, unlike hell, is very difficult to understand, and with it there is a rebuke, for it reveals our own impurity. To say that Mozart is a paradisial composer in today's climate is a radical thing indeed. It challenges the modernists and the humanists to understand that Mozart's genius does not represent an end in itself. Indeed, we have to conclude that Mozart was the medium of an archetype of beauty. For as the great Sufi medieval mystic Ibn Arabi says, God reveals himself through his theophanies, whether it be through Christ or the Buddha or virgin nature or in the word-made book, the Quran. God shows himself in everything that lives, and this includes the sublime language of music. One can only know God through his theophanies. The soul of Mozart was one who, through God, saw in God with the eye of God. And this is all we know and all we need to know. <laughs> 